Clark. I'm Rick Entrop. And I'm Peggy Herson. And we are coming to you from the coffee shop. Today we are in Ballard at Java Bean. Java Bean. And yeah, Java Bean, which I just randomly picked. Uh, it looked good because it had the sandwich would look really good on the uh, on Yeah, the it does look pretty tasty. Yeah, though. it is good actually. I got a chili egg and egg one. bagel on a... Chili and egg bagel. On a, on a jalapeno bagel. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, jalapeno cheese. I'm finding though that tomatoes and breakfast not a good combination. Really? Yeah, maybe maybe salsa on an omelet. Yeah. As well yeah. as much I, tomato as I go. I did that yesterday. But, I, I fried up bacon and everything. sliced up tomato and had like a... a of uh, tomato and bacon, like the uh, hors d'oeuvres for breakfast. Oh, nice! It was really good. Ooh, I got um, uh, in my vegetable box. I have a box of vegetables delivered every other week. Um, I joined one of those little co-op things. Uh, got an eggplant, and I was talking to my nephew, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I got an eggplant because I saw these recipes for eggplant pizzas." And it's like a oh, low carb right. thing where you slice it into rounds and then put yep. pizza stuff on top. Hmm. Oh, and I was like, ooh, that sounds really good. And I tried it. Possibly the most delicious thing I've ever had. Wow. Like huh. um, the the eggplant yeah. just like crisps up a little bit. Right. And it's, so I just put like sprinkled Parmesan cheese on the eggplant when I yeah. first roasted it a little bit to just make like soak up the water a little bit. Right. And then provolone and pepperoni. And I was like, I ate the entire eggplant, and good I might get another eggplant. <laughs> so, so like a little so ketchup good. and some squeezed cheese, and exactly. you're good? Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cheese whiz. Yeah. Got a little spray Yeah, bar. no, it was tasty. And it was just little, like, you know, like little hors d'oeuvre size, because you, you slice them that way. I guess you can okay. slice them long ways, but it was just easier. Man, it was good. Nice. You know, I, I, I treat. Yeah, no doubt. That's just that's just to digress a little bit, going back up. Um, I uh, was actually listening to last last week's podcast, and I gotta say I was probably one of the funnier ones. Listener? Was no, it? Yeah. I was the yeah, most happy I've ever been. I've won okay, I've won a four. I've won a four listeners. Yeah, you're a listener. Yeah, I'm a fan. I, yeah, I'm a, next time I'm gonna stand at the airport with a banner. There we go. Oh, yeah, nice. uh, an overpass. That's a really good idea. No, I got kind of was misty. It? I, yeah, I got it. I was like, I was episode thirty six. I was like, that's only twenty episodes away from fifty. Or, that's no, true. It's actually less than twenty. Only four away oh, yeah. from forty. Yeah. yeah. Like two hundred forty away from three hundred. What? Yeah, we have right. almost three hundred. Oh, like it's it's hard to believe though. It's like it's been actually that we've done that many. That's uh-huh. right. I'm getting it's, and it's just piling up. And I know lots yeah, of content so, out there for you viewers to, to consume. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> so it was just milestoney. There wasn't anything it about kinda, it. You yeah, were like, oh, that's like, funny. I was like, wow. It's I like, remember us arguing a lot, but I've been grumpy for like two weeks. Uh, so. So you're on low carbs. <laughs> It's not because I'm on low carbs, it's because I keep going off of low carbs and I keep eating carbs and then it messes with my sleep and it, yeah, and I'm just you don't seem, grumpy it's, in general. You don't seem grumpy, you just seem People fun. always say that and yeah, I'm We're not supposed to agree grumpy. with grumpy people when they say they're grumpy. I know, because then that that's makes you feel, all on the fire yeah, so. like, no, you're not how well, you feel. You're pretty cheerful today. <laughs> what do you mean you're grumpy? No, I was pretty grumpy. grumpy. No, I am. You're not allowed to decide if I'm grumpy or not. I'm the one who knows. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know I'm grumpy until it's pointed uh, out. Yeah. I know when I'm grumpy. I know when I'm grumpy too. I feel it really? from the second I wake up. Oh, I'm yeah. like, and it's, oh, and it's the little yeah. things that let you know. Uh huh. Like the stubbing okay. of the toe or yep. the you know, or, or, or you something know takes three times as long as it ought to, and it yes. just and it's three times as annoying. Uh huh. Yeah? Yeah. Like for example, this lovely place that we're at. The Java bean. Java bean? Java bean. Perfectly yes. fine. Everything about coming in here annoyed me this morning. Um, three people said hi and then stared at me and I didn't know who to talk to. And I'm like, somebody decide what you guys are doing behind the counter. Oh. <laughs> because I, you're all looking at me. And then I ordered an iced coffee and they don't have iced coffee. They have iced Americano. And iced Americano tastes like my butthole. And I do not order it anymore. Wait. Because I discovered that through this podcast. Because after about week 10, I was like, you know what? Whenever they say we don't have iced coffee, we have iced Americano, that means they're not really that into iced drinks, and so they don't really 
no. put, right. they just throw ice in some Americano and then it always yeah. tastes well, burnt and then it just like, Right, because then you're adding water to, yeah. to espresso coffee basically. Yeah, yeah it's so water. It's never yeah. good. Yeah. And so now it's like, well, if they don't have iced coffee, I'll just get regular coffee because, Do they have drip know. and ice? Is that the same thing? Uh, they don't, well, I could have put ice in the drip. Okay. But they don't have an ice machine. Oh. No, well, iced coffee. Usually what they do, either they do a cold brew, which almost nobody does, but that's what oh. I do at home. Oh, really? Starbucks does cold brew. Huh. Um, Stumptown does cold brew. Is that, what does that do to the coffee? Um, you, do, you never heat it. You just okay. soak it in grounds overnight and then strain it. Yeah, I guess and it's, it's sweeter, flavors. it's really? less bitter. Oh, wow. It's really huh. by far the best way to do iced coffee. Oh, cool. Um, and and if they have like at Starbucks, I love their iced coffee. Or they just do um, a brew and then refrigerate it, yeah. so they're not diluting it with ice. Okay. But they pour it over ice. But if you pour hot coffee over ice, it's just like super diluted. Mm. So yeah, sure, um, sure, yeah, because you got to get the right sort of formula. Yeah, yeah okay. totally. So anyway, so then they didn't have it, and then the guy made some like <laughs> his little like oh well, you know, in the winter. It's like in the winter they stop serving soda. You stop serving uh -huh. water. Ice cream. I, that's a cold well, drink. Do, is, I'm not the, asking the, you the to put me in a refrigerator. Is seasonal usually as well. Yeah, yeah I know. Not to bring pumpkin back. <laughs> <laughs> I do love pumpkin. I think pumpkin. There's no reason it can't be. Yeah. Pumpkin spice can be year round. Sure. But anyway, yeah. so they don't have it. I'm like, okay, then give me a drip coffee. Yeah, I, no, like, no, I'm I, not going to pat you on the back for not serving the thing that I want. And it was. It's just like you know, people if they're like, oh. This is why we don't do that thing that you want. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, like, all I need no... is that you don't do it. Yeah, like, you don't need to convince much. me I'm wrong for wanting it because <laughs> no, it's winter. I <laughs> still want it. Yeah, yeah. You don't have it. Fine. So then I went to the coffee thing and like, squirt. It's squirt your own, which I hate squirt your own coffee, but that's fine. Squirt oh. I'm squirting my own out of the thing, and it's like spray, spray, like just mist. Oh. And I was like, you need more of the drip. Yeah. He's like, oh, and then changes it. And I'm just like, oh, I wanted a cup of coffee. Spray and pray. No, totally. It's like I went to Olive Garden for lunch last week. And like everything that happened was a giant hassle. Like I told you not to go to Olive Garden. Know, That's podcast one. Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know Olive Garden is the worst place on earth. But my coworker really loves their raviolis and their tortellinis. And it's a good way to kill an hour. Okay. And so we were at yeah. Olive Garden. But we're there at like 11.15. Nobody's there. You kill more than an hour because you should an hour just standing there to I get know. into Olive Garden. But yeah. there's nobody there because we're there early. Oh, okay. And so there's like nine Olive Garden workers all standing at the little kiosk <laughs> look, just staring at the screen. And we're like two people. And it's like, okay, you're a party of two. <clears throat> now let me figure out and starts typing things in. Just and hacking like, into the security. What's your name? <laughs> Lynn. And there's like a billion workers just standing there, and I'm just like, Lynn, L Y N N. Everyone's looking at the little printout thing, a little. <laughs> a little ticket comes out, then he hands it to one of the other idiots standing around staring at a screen. And like, it just took forever, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> just bring us to a table. And then, like, the, the woman walking us to the table has to have the. Comp and Lynn and I are like chatting it up. Like, we're, we're into let's vent about work mode. Like, okay. where we're just like, and she said, blah, blah, blah. And like, we're annoyed. And then the woman just interrupts it, like, so, are you guys here for lunch? <laughs> what else would we be here yeah, for? Yeah. I was like, like the bowling, stop actually. talking you got, to us. Yeah, yeah. Where's the shoe <laughs> rental? I don't know, just a stupid thing. Totally. <laughs> no, and then, and then the Skate entire park. lunch was just people interrupting us. For yeah. shit, like the the waiter came up to say, "I'm uh, I'm gonna be with you in just a minute." Yeah. Fine, then just take a minute and then come up to us. Like he interrupted our conversation. Like if we had been sitting there, like staring, tapping our foot, maybe come up and say, "It'll be a second." But we oh, had no, been no, sitting no, no. down it's, for thirty seconds. They, they find the opposite that you want. If you want them to come, they're nobody there. No. But, yeah, but you if get, you're but like, if you're not hey, ready to order, if you just sat down, if we're clearly yeah. having a great time chatting yeah. up, why interrupt us a hundred? times for nothing and then I was like we're never coming back here I'm done with Olive Garden and Lynn was like I really like it to no yeah. we are going to the local like the taqueria to... where people ignore us yeah. and they give us our tacos and leave us the F alone because uh... I just can't stand that it, and it, none of it's sincere it's all like my, my boss told me if I don't interact with my 
with my table every 45 seconds that I'm fired and like and it's just like I don't want you here like, like I don't that, want you interacting like that movie with waiting. me oh I love that movie yeah, yeah. it's like you need more we actually, you need more flair my son for the past two weeks has been bugging me about going into the shed and grabbing the box of movies and DVDs and uh-huh. stuff that we had stored away and I was, we haven't watched them don't need to watch them because there's Netflix, there's Hulu, right. there's all this. And I started pulling out, and that's one of the movies that popped out was Waiting. Waiting. Yeah, that's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. That's yeah, and uh, like mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. yeah. Kid from uh, Freaks and Geeks. Which was one? the main dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the nerdy, yeah. Well, the protagonist, Star. basically. Yeah. 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 Is it He's the trainee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah totally. The guy that didn't talk until the end of the movie, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jennifer and Aniston. he pulled the brain yeah. or something. Yeah. What was the one, the move, the move that he pulled? Dang where. The, yeah, oh, where they bent over and yeah. you gotta catch him looking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right, I forget. Yeah, My yeah and it was, a, it was an eight it used movie. used to be for, really, really For, for lowbrow and the genre, it did really well. Yeah, yeah like, totally. Uh, Andy Melanakis is in it. Oh, I yeah? Who that huh. is. He's, he's a kid from uh, uh, MTV. He's like a oh. mid 20 year old teenage looking dude. He, he was on. Uh, I think so Jimmy Kimmel kind of yeah, him? Yeah, they used to, okay. they used to, he was really underage looking and they yeah. would send him into like liquor stores to buy uh, booze and yeah. stuff. Well, he'd, or he'd stand outside to get yeah. people to buy him booze. That's right, right. right. And he was actually of age. Yeah. yeah. But he, I think he, is, he has a condition where he looks really yeah. super I think he had his own show on MTV for a little while. Yeah. It was just really Andy Miller way Miller out there show. Just, yeah. whoa, what's going on? A little bit more like Tom Green type of stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. In that vein. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Nice. I've been watching a really good new um, sketch comedy show called Kroll Show. It's yeah. Nick Kroll. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? Uh-huh. Totally. Really I've watched funny. Mo- it, 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 some of it's kind of... Well, don't... But... It's it's totally like poop and fart. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which he, I enjoy. He, his characters are phenomenal. He does he really good so characterizations. Sharp. of yeah. yeah on, on the Dane Cook level, I think. Of just <laughs> oh, coming up with I characters. And, way beyond Dane Cook. I, I think Dane Cook's pretty good for coming for up with characters. characters. Yeah. Church Lady, watching. hello. Uh, um, church... I don't know. I, I don't think of Dane Cook as a character Smith, personally, but I don't know. I've only seen his stand up, I guess. From, I seen I'm just thinking of Saturday Night Live. Dane Cook? Not Dane Cook. You're talking no, no, no. Dana Carvey. Dane Carvey. Oh, okay, yes, sorry, Dana sorry. Carvey, absolutely. My bad, okay. my bad. Yeah, Dana <laughs> I was Carvey. like, Dane sorry. Cook? Yeah, no, 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 Dane Cook. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, Dana, oh, for sure Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey, yes, okay, absolutely. sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, no. that's why I was no. like, I don't even understand what you're yeah. talking about. No, I, I think I had Dane Cook left over from waiting. <laughs> oh, that's funny, yeah, totally. <laughs> no, but Nick Kroll is like, he's, because he's one of the comedy Bang Bang guys, and that's like always what I loved about him was his really great characters yeah. um his stand-up's okay but like he just like disappears into these yeah, wild oh, yeah, yeah. characters and, like was it linda and linda or what, what's the yeah the liz two? and liz, liz, and liz. Well, Lizzie. yeah exactly yeah. that's he that's makes fun of reality good. tv a lot yeah. and that's why oh, like watch it yeah. an episode at a time because if you watch too much you're like it's yeah, kind of the it, same oh, reality yeah. show right, thing. right yeah but he also carries like publicity, the sketch publicity. It'll be in like seven different episodes. Yeah. Like he brings it. Like all of his sketches continue. Yeah. So oh. it's like seven it's progressive. Almost. Seven different uh, takes on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really cool. cool. Anyway, I'll check that. I like it. It's it's seven good. different one trick ponies. There you go. Yeah. yeah for sure. What's the name of it again? Kroll Nick Show. Kroll show. The, the I like Kroll his show. intro. It's got like just yeah. about every different font and every. It's like uh-huh. total uh, ADD intro. Yeah. <laughs> also, it shows but it rips off all these logos and like yeah. Miami Vice. And uh-huh. when we were digging kind of through stuff. the box. I found an Adam Sandler comedy CD. Also. Oh wow! Oh, his. <laughs> I loved his oh, comedy one? CDs uh, back uh, in the day. Go laugh at you or something. I or? don't remember the title of it, but it had. Hey, it had <laughs> Oh, I had a beer when I was four bang <laughs> or whatever. I think we the, listened the, to that when that came out Mexican. like every, like maybe six times yeah. a day for. I think yeah. that might have been on there. I also had uh, Kevin Nealon. It was a it was a hypnotist. He goes in. Adam yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. yeah, that's that's the, we're to that. the longest yeah. pee. Yeah, that, yeah, where it's like just like he goes like a hose and then parts of the wind <laughs> yeah. a lot more. And, oh man, oh, oh, oh. And he's kind of like. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know if you can get much lower than that, really, in uh-huh. brow. In brow uh, quality. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah, good. Probably. Not, not in quality, just, you know, I mean. Her level of brow. It's probably been quality. about 12 yeah. years since I listened yeah. to it last, and it's, nice. it's still, still brought to chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, just, totally. Totally. Willie. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah, he, yeah he, as, he does a good Boston accent. Oh yeah, for sure. As white bread as Adam Sandler has become of just like being, you know, like not cutting edge. Back in the day, he was he was pretty. Uh, yeah, he started great. on remote control. Yeah, the, totally. The, uh, MTV. Right. Uh, he was Game the guy show. in the armchair, yeah. the couch potato guy. Yeah, well, he would come out like in a towel and yeah, do totally. stuff. And I think he that's also, when I first saw him. I think he might. Have I think that was his first stuff. He would also crank call people too. He would all, he like had, the Jersey yeah, Boys. Yeah, on, on the CDs. Yeah, I remember right. that. Right. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's good. Well, in his songs, he's, he's he's very music. Well, not very musically, but he's he's got good funny songs. His he's, uh, yeah. piece of shit car. Best of or, SNL. They have his um, audition. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about this backwards. Jimmy Fallon's Best of SNL CD. Surprisingly good for how B minus Jimmy Fallon felt on SNL. But his when they put just pull his best moments out, it's phenomenal. I think yeah. it's, that's but, a lot of those characters kind of like that do that. Well, he did really good impressions that I don't think of him as an impressionist. Yeah, but his Alex said he. She was watches amazing. his show all the time. He's, she watches. Well, she his watches late his, night show is great. Yeah, yeah she, she yeah. really likes it. She thinks it's pretty funny. She, and really she actually funny. mentioned the same thing about his impressions. Yeah. It's on too late for me. I don't, yeah, well, I just watch it on Hulu. Well, it's on earlier now. But, um, right. yeah, no, he just took no, over the Tonight Show. Before 8 o'clock at <laughs> night. <laughs> but, uh, no, but it's, it, like, when he was on SNL, it was like, oh, yeah, Jimmy's the guy who laughs during sketches. Yeah. But then when they pulled out his little, like, the, the, the one sketches that he was, like, the main person of and smushed them all together. Yeah. He was so good, and I think it was because he was on during the eras of so many other people who were so much like Will Ferrell and all these people that were oh, so right, much bigger right. that you yeah. don't notice it he as much. Got shadowed. But then when he did like his late night shows, I think it, it's fantastic. Yeah. But they show his audition for SNL, like the the screen test, and he does an Adam Sandler impression that's like uh. the funniest, yeah. and you can tell he's kind of like. So Adam Sandler, you could tell because like he was auditioning when Adam Sandler was their guy, yeah. oh, and then he just like kind of rips him a new one, and it's so funny because at a certain point out. you see him going like, "Is this okay?" Like he's kind of like, and like you hear a couple of chuckles. Yeah, I guess an audition really isn't a roast, is it? <laughs> I know, but it was really, really good, and I was like, oh, "That's Will, Will clever." Will Ferrell's uh, audition tapes for SNL are pretty funny yes, too. Yes, they're totally. Yeah, where he's I, yelling at the kid to get off the shed. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah, just like a normal conversation, then just blurts out. And it's funny because he did that as a sketch, and I yeah. remember that being okay. But him in the audition doing it yeah, is so yeah. much it's, funnier. Yeah, yeah, oh is. my god, like him pantomiming flipping the burger, yeah, just yeah. like yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was so funny. I like, anyway, I, I think the favorite YouTube video I like of him is when his he has his daughter playing his landlord. Yeah, that one's cute. The funnier die. <laughs> Give me yeah. that was like bitch. <laughs> the inaugural funnier die video, wasn't it? When they launched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it went viral. Yeah. Yeah. I, I watched a pretty neat interview. I was uh, getting dug with high, and he interviewed Cheech or er, Tommy Chong and Doug Benson did. Yeah. Right on. Uh, Tommy Chong and Kyle Kinane. Okay. Kinane. 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 Yeah. Kyle Kinane. Yeah. Who I think is super funny. He's great. And fellow Beardsmith. Beardsmith. <laughs> no, uh, Have you watched Manson yet? The documentary uh, about beards? No. No. Okay. Okay. You have Netflix, well, right? Get it yeah. on it. You'll really no, like it. I have the DVD Netflix, not the watch it anytime. Yeah, but you can get, you sure, can get everything yeah. on that. I know, yeah. I know. Okay. Just yeah. saying. You'll like it. What's it's it called again? Man- Mansome. 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 Yeah. Okay. You'll it's do. just about men's facial hair okay. and body hair in general, huh. but mostly like beards yeah. and mustaches. Uh, speaking of anyway. my, my Mansome shaver pooped out like a couple mm. months ago, so... So now you're free range. Yeah, just uh, <laughs> you're gonna beard it, right? Yeah. Well, but Alex trims it up when I go into yeah. cuts, so it's not quite as dire. <laughs> you but, won't die of beard yeah. over. But I've been looking at trying to find a decent like replacement, and everything's either like way expensive or Crabby. just one thing, or yeah. or uh, you know, because I'd like something that will actually I can act, like a, a shave it as well, not just trim it okay so i can actually you know instead of using a razor to clean up just use the that, that, yeah like that has an edger or whatever yeah or, or has just like an electric razor mm-hmm. aspect to it uh, like the um it has there's a, a few like, like the micro screen like the yeah, exactly yeah. exactly yeah but um i haven't seen any that check out ross 
Yeah? Yeah, Ross, okay. they have that kind of stuff. Huh. stuff well, I just, I've been reading reviews, and it doesn't seem like there's any anything that is, does more than just the one thing. And if it, it's not that great. Then so. if you, I mean, they do have that kind of stuff there. It's almost like where, like, Valentine's Day gifts or Father's Day gifts go to Yeah, die. I guess if it's only, yeah, like 20 bucks or something, then I'm not really but, out. You know, I just don't want to yeah. spend 100 bucks on right. something that's You'll only have to get another one. It's usually, like, yeah. under 10. Oh, really? Yeah, and then oh. if you spend 10 bucks. Oh, so cool. All right. And they'll yeah. take it back, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm sorry, I interrupted you when you were talking about yeah. Kyle Kinane and yeah. Oh no, it was just a really neat interview. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They uh did they make you sad? Because I heard an interview with them that made me like it bummed me out because with who? With Tommy Chong? With Tommy Chong because oh. they were talking it was it was a Cheech and Chong interview on the Adam Carolla show. Yeah. And I think right. they they both worked on there. Cheech their- was talking about how he was currently living on Tommy Chong's girlfriend's couch because yeah. they were both bankrupt. And yeah, no, Tommy like, Chong's role, he, he, he has his whole website going. Okay. He's That's got, good. it's, uh, in this fact, I'll This was like maybe it. five or six years ago. Yeah, it's like Cannabis Save, Cannabis okay. Save, it's like C-A-N-N-I-S, or Cannabis okay. Save or something, where he gives right. like Groupons and stuff to populated material. That's funny. So that's his okay, cool. bread and butter that's, right now. Because when they were... Isn't that the same website he got busted for for selling? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's different. Like, no, he got busted for having his picture and name on bongs that were sold in head shops uh, huh. that were transported over, I think it was internationally, which yeah, was why he, he was went to jail yeah. in federal prison. Because it, they were shipping the bongs internationally, huh. and it was like the Cheech and Chong bong. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. it was yeah, it was a little ridiculous. Because in that interview, he was talking about how much the government spent prosecuting him, and yeah. he was like, yeah. he was like, they said it was like a like a forty million dollar investigation, and he was like, why? <laughs> like well, what? Just to make what a, is a, yeah, an they, example of yeah. you know. Try to nip it in the bud, right. him, if you will. Yeah. Uh, get the punch. Uh, Good one. So no. Um, he, anyway. But I, that interview made me bummed out because they sounded like destitute old men. Because yeah. they're in their like late sixties. Yeah, he was right? in the snows. He was seventy, 70s. like. I, over 70 I yeah. want to say 77 is what he said he was but yeah, I don't think he might not have been there, there. Yeah. it just made me sad yeah. that they were so like just they just seemed so sad yeah. but a few things I learned from it was that uh, Cheech Marin is like a genius I guess he's is like he? uber smart yeah huh. um, which, I would believe that um, yeah. you know and also that they started in Vancouver, Canada, is nice. where they, they got their start, <laughs> which was even and, even and cooler, so. Tommy Chong's parents' uh, bar, I thought. I think something like that. It was a, yeah. it, they had a little comedy, comedy club, yeah. area that they yeah, yeah. could have nice. been sure yeah. Right and, on. Uh, they both were of like was, I think they were like doing the deliveries. Like Cheech went up there to do delivery driving. Oh yeah, yeah. Huh. Funny. And that's, that's where cool. that's where he met Tommy Chong. Yeah. I remember seeing that. I think right I seen on. a documentary on how they yeah. met. Well, and, uh, what I like about them is they're like the, one of the first. Well, I mean, there's there's been musical comedy groups, but I don't know. I, I like it when comedians can add that to their mm-hmm. repertoire. Like like Fred Armiston, who is the he's the funniest uh, person. But he's Seth he Meyers. Me. Yeah, he's first. gonna be he's the band leader. The, the band uh-huh. leader for that, That's which I thought cool. was just phenomenal. I mean, yeah. hope he doesn't stop doing Portlandia because of it. But, no, he's uh, well. At least the the article I read, he said specifically he will not stop Portlandia. Good, good. And that they have a whole plan for when he's shooting, and that he's gonna do like because his partner in Portlandia is a musician. Oh yeah. So they may do like like music oh. videos when they're oh, in, there like doing their thing. Yeah. And, and they they had in that same article they had uh, um, a, just like a long sc- scroll of the the best Fred Armisen musical sketches oh, from nice. SNL. Oh, yeah. And I well, spent like a whole afternoon just clicking through nice. going like, oh, this one's so good. Yeah. And then the next one, and well, I was like... Well, did anything top the bongo, Cuban bongo guy? No, or? because I just love that yeah, so much. And that's epic. actually... Um, I was listening to a different comic. I think it was like Dave Cross who was talking about Fred uh, Armisen uh, when he was like... when. 
it was like the Janine Garofalo, Mark oh, Maron, sure, Dave sure. Cross okay. age where yeah. they were like the big up and comers and uh -huh. everything was alternative comedy and yeah, he was, Oswald yeah, exactly. Yeah. It actually might have been Patton that was yeah. talking about it. Like okay. everyone's getting up with like a notebook, like they oh. didn't even memorize their jokes because yeah. like, you shouldn't like, why prepare? Like we're just uh, comedians, you know, like oh, that 90s edgy, era. Edgy, and yeah, then Fred goes, Armisen yeah. shows up as the like little 19 year old, I'm going to be a comedian in full yeah. Cuban huh. flamenco costume right. with giant <laughs> yeah. sleeves yeah. And, yeah. And, and congas yeah. and like drags congas up on stage awesome. and does a whole set as that character huh. and everyone was just like what is he doing right. and they were like we were like what a loser and then like he oh, just no. like but it was like that edge where it's like one fad is like like growing and the yeah. this is the next fab that's gonna come up in sure, comedy sure, yeah. but it's not quite there yet right, right. so like so everyone thought he was like a total wanker and then his time a little bit. yeah exactly which I think is really funny um, but I like the era I mean I like alt comedy it's fine like it's funny and stuff but like I nothing makes me happier than good characters which is why oh, yeah. I like people like Pete Holmes and sure oh um, yeah Pete Holmes is just and awesome. Nick Kroll and uh, I, what's his name um, uh, Dean Cook? Dean Cook. <laughs> no, uh, there's, I, I'm, it'll come to me in just a second. He's a comedy bang bang guy oh. um, who I think is just genius. Ackerman? Uh, Scott Ackerman. Yeah. There you go. Who's that? I, I Sasserman. He's um, the host of Comedy Bang Bang. And, uh, I used to listen to that podcast. Oh, a lot. Okay. okay. Yeah, he's the blonde, real sure, sure. cute yeah, guy. Yeah. Okay, he does characters? Yeah. Okay. I've only seen him from the comedy comedy bang. Yeah, comedy, and he comedy, plays bang, like bang. the <laughs> comedy comedy bang. He does like the uh, straight man in that, yeah. but he just he has really huh. good characters. Right. That, like, that's the name Reggie of the podcast Watts, now because it was comedy death ray when I was listening to it. No, they changed to comedy bang bang, yeah. and it might have actually been in comedy. Death have you seen some of the more. teach? I don't think he, so. He, he, he's got a bit, or he's got a, a show now, I guess, called Teach. Reggie Watts does? Yeah. Oh, nice. Where he plays a teacher, and he teaches cool. all these, he's like, all these teach. different teachers. Weird. It's called Teach. Yeah, I've only seen a few of them, but. I know. But you know how he does his, uh, you know, he does different kind of characters, too. Mm -hmm. Or he can go into different modalities of yeah. being funny. He just, I think he just applies those to being a teacher. Cool. And kind of just says nonsense with things, but I says know. them in a, in a, you know, dialecty way, way that, yeah. that makes it sound like he's saying something, but right on. really not. I'll check that out because I like him and I, I wanted to see something. him do more than like oh, yeah. his. I mean, this he's still unknown. I mean, sure, we know him because sure. we're a little bit of the like that's, well, he was the first that's person my jam, to... but most people don't know who Reggie right. Watts yeah. is. And so he, like his musical comedy, like the, the funny raps and stuff sure. that he makes up is probably, is like the foot forward thing yeah, but yeah. I just think he's so like but, I want to see him do more right. stuff where, where his his head of timeness though is use, using the um, loop yeah, functions totally. with, which beatboxers started to do uh -huh. a lot of right um, and especially this guy Beardy Man who if you haven't heard of Beardy Man look I him up he's phenomenal yeah. but uh, but he, he doesn't he, he's a little bit comedy but he's way more music yeah. he's sort of like live improv music uh -huh. with a little bit of comedy whereas Reggie Watts is comedy with a little bit of live improv yeah, music totally so I don't, but it's all still using using music uh, uh, basically sampling tools and synthesizers and and microphones to make the sounds and then turn them immediately impromptu into music yeah which there should which be a name for that a, isn't it an M? I, yeah, I have no I idea. Was just, I, like, Beatboxing is the only thing that I can think of. Um, I always thought of it beat. as looping. But yeah, looping, looping. Yeah. But, but they're using it. their voice yeah. for the most part. So. Well, and that's like, um, well, in the music world, a lot of people are doing that. But, yeah, like, yeah. but it's its own thing. And so if you yeah. learn that, like so, learning the comedy side of it is like the, like you're but, learning the two things. But Reggie Watts and Beardy Man have a, you can tell they have a very solid understanding of music right, exactly. and know how, you know, to, to progress a chord or to add a melody or what beats do. And you know, I mean, they, they know music. So it's like they're first and foremost, you know, if they didn't know music, it would just come right. out garbage, exactly. you know? So, Which, noise. speaking of music, last night I went to um, a concert with my sister in law, yeah. Rick's wife, Alex. Right um, for the crying spell. Cool. How was it? Yeah. Really, really fun. Cool. And here's what happened was I was having this day, like I had this totally uh, long, wild day, and I got home and I had like a headache that started. It started like right behind my eye, 
and then I like couldn't open my eye for a while, and then I took some Excedrin migraine, and okay. I turned off all the lights because like eh, yeah. I was like ah, light, now I'm melting, <laughs> and then I laid down and I was like oh now I feel sick, and then I got like my stomach was going and I was like Alex was maybe like 20 minutes away, and I was like. I really want to go and I was like okay if I can't get up in 15 minutes then when she gets here I'll poop out and I like laid there for a little while with my eyes closed and just wasn't feeling any better and then I was like you know what screw this I'm going and I like oh, went wow. out and I was like I feel like shit but I'm here right. Right. <laughs> I was like I'm getting booze when we get there and I'm gonna right. suck it up and she was like okay and she was like going off about all this annoying stuff that happened to her at work and she was oh, a little yeah. bit like yeah. like we were just like bitching at each I, other I she it was, was nice about. yeah yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> so we were like getting it was a nice little vet session where I was like I'm so mad because my head hurts and I can't like I can't open this eye and then we got there and the music started and I told went away and oh, I had cool. a little I had a rum and diet coke and I oh. just tanked it nice. hoping it would kind of relax you know yeah. and, carbs and rum? a little, little bit, bit little but bit. negligible okay, cool. I try not to do alcohol because it it basically turns into sugar in your body and oh, it does so. it produces an insulin response oh, okay. and so oh. like it's better to do something like wine which I technically I mean alcohol is in like spirits right right because wine has a lower glycemic index than even though like oh. vodka has no carbs right. it creates it's an insulin response. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, um, but I just needed something to like right. chill me out a little bit, and it worked, and it was cool. great. And like the concert, the crying spell. It's this band yeah. they do like new wave. Like Alex described it as like the Cure, um, but like a modern version of the Cure. And I was sort like, of. okay. And that that was exactly what it felt like yeah. to me. Yeah. Like yeah, as though the Cure was just a brand new band. And making stuff that was like really, they had like a techno element to it, but had this was really strong to, 80s. Kind of? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, well, definitely new wave is, yeah. is yeah. the flavor. So For something sure. that can be turned on the end, you could expect to sit here and there on the. I have no um, idea what that is. 1077. Why as rock? Definitely more alternative, but yeah, yeah. They, they would play them. Like if they, yeah. especially if they had like an alternative hour. I always, whenever I hear them, I imagine the South Park kids listening to it it has oh, that don't. sort of really it's a lot, a lot like darker and that's i mean i've listened to their music and uh -huh. i don't know i'll just keep my opinion to myself that's fine. but it, it, it seems okay so I, I guess if if i were to have an opinion um it, it's not quite catchy enough it, it's like uh -huh. they have the same flavor and the same yeah. tones but there's no catch yeah they're there's no there's no hook uh, there's they, no they kind of thing that remember they thing that's the memorable hook. about the song yeah. about the song and and that's not you know i mean it's just right. what it is but um the other thing is is like with with the cure and depeche mode and and all those they have i mean like a majority of their songs are pretty dark and pretty depressing but they do have their you know, just can't right. get enough, and Friday I'm in love, and you know the the, the happier, poppier end of Personal new waves, which See, they just didn't even touch. Oh, this and this was their new album. It was all I actually found them to be too. Uh, they were. It was all like, like life is what you make it. Have a good at. Like it was all super upbeat. So oh, maybe yeah? this is their oh. happy album because be. like their know. like their catchphrase. I mean, it had a lot of space elements to it where they were like we're going to outer space and it was this it almost had like the like rocket man and, like thematic content but then the subtext of everything was like you like the world is in front of you and and it's this exciting place and like everything was really happy like it was like dancey and they like threw glow sticks into the crowd and, like everyone was dancing and like it was really like um, almost like a rave it was fun. It was super yeah. fun, and he had cool. this like he looked like the lead singer who's La Alex is. Uh, yeah, he's she cuts his hair. A good front guy. Oh man, he's yeah. he's a great really? performer. He's yeah, like yeah. six foot seven. He was wearing a teal suit. Yeah, blonde and just hair, like mohawk. dancing. Yeah, blonde mohawk. He had a, a black streak in it. Was just dancing and like yeah, um, their drummer person. is fantastic. Like How it was the really sound. Good. I went to one of their really concerts good. where it was really flat. Yeah. No. Well, we were on the front row. Okay. And it was a lot of. Um, I mean, the Crocodile Lounge has oh, okay. fantastic cool. sound. Sure, yeah, sure. it's a cool it was, venue. Have you been there before? It was fun. It's a cool venue. Right yeah, yeah, it is a really good venue. Yeah. And it was 
really fun. And the funniest part about it was this guy in the front row, who was also very tall and white blonde hair, which to me, it read almost like he was a little bit in love with the lead singer. Oh. And he was just uh. like, like excited face. And he got the finger going, the hand up with the finger out, yeah. and just was like, Pumping the finger, the Pumping whole the finger. Oh. did not stop the whole yeah. show. And then they threw the glow sticks, and he like picked up a glow stick, and then the glow stick was the finger, yeah. and he's just going. Uh, and it's uh, like I was like, man, his arms gotta hurt. It was an yeah. hour of him just like yeah, like right in the front row, well, and it I was cracking me. He, he oh, goes to all their concerts, and each concert he switches the arm. <laughs> oh, so, so it gives a complete gets, workout. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And like, yeah. Left yeah. hand going. So it's not yeah. 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 And it was so funny because he's just like, and then like you could tell the lead singer would do something he was really into. And he was like, oh, like the finger oh, got a little oh, more intense. Yeah. And then oh, at, at, near the end of the show, the pinky the started pinky to grow out. out. Oh, yeah. And then it turned into an I love you finger. Right. And it was like, right. Right. Uh, it was so funny to me. It was ridiculous. Uh, and I just sounded, that cracked sounded, up the whole time. I love you finger. That sounded he right. was like, yeah, it's the, yeah, I think <laughs> the devil no. horns. No, yeah, the, yeah, but well, it was the straight uh, this, up like yeah, the, this, the okay, see, turns. This, the thumb out is I love you. The thumb yeah. in is the devil, devil horns because it makes like a six. Yeah. A six like three sixes somehow are in oh, this. Oh, I thought this was the, that's why it was the devil horns. Well, and that, yeah. No, it's kind of a double well, entendre. Yeah. No, it I was the straight up I love you hand. Ronnie James, it was the Ronnie side language for I Ronnie James Dio is the one that actually popularized the devil horns. It's actually, uh, it's a gypsy thing to ward off the evil eye. Oh, it's to uh, weird. point down like that. Interesting. It has three huh. meanings. That but this guy was just like so into Speaking it. Speaking of pointing it down, I don't know, a lot of raves, whenever DJs are doing really good, it's you point it's not you don't point up. Oh, you, do you? You point You're down like, like, like this is yeah. like like uh -huh. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like if a nice. DJ gets up and goes like this, it's one of his favorite tracks. Right on. So uh, Well yeah. and they had a I loved it and it was like the energy was great and not knowing any of their music, it was the perfect like like it was so high energy cool. that it was just like having fun and like it went by like it felt like 30 seconds they played huh. their whole album oh wow um how long was the so, show a couple hours yeah did anybody open for them they did have an opening at band which was kind of like a, a thrasher band hmm. but it was weird and alex and i were talking about this as we were leaving they each individually were like way talented, but their songs were boring. They were just like thrasher songs, oh, right, but like right. their drummer was killing it. He was like such a good drummer, and I was like, oh man, that drummer. And then they had a chick lead guitarist. She had a stupid face on. She was just like <laughs> doing this really weird <laughs> face and kept like thrashing on the guitar. But when she'd go into a solo, it was like she's really good. Really good. And then their lead singer like started to sag pitch the second half of their set. Like the first half, he was on it and he had a really nice voice. But then you could tell it was just a little too high for him. And I was like, man. If I was your manager, I would get you some better songs with more melody and yeah. like bring you down a, a major third because like uh, if it, if that was the case, because they were, I, I liken them to Evanescence. You guys know the oh, band Evanescence? Yeah, yeah. That, it's like yeah. a, I've that been into era. I've since like October. <laughs> no, that's from David Cross. <laughs> nice. But like that's like their genre. But in that genre, they were totally forgettable. But they were like so individually good that I was like, oh, it's kind of too bad. But because um, man, their drummer, like I was just staring at the drummer because he was just yeah. going. Do, do you nuts. like Eminence? Because I've heard like yeah, like fine. snippets. It seems like they, that would be pretty cool. But I liked it when they were new. Uh, I was like, yeah. oh, this is the yeah. jam, and I turn it yeah, up. Yeah, sort of like, like the Lincoln like, Park couple of years yeah, where that was the uh, more like. Melodic mainstream pressure right, right. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I thought like, it was fine. Like, because there was it's like the new metal. So, like with Static X and Slipknot and all the yeah. other things. See, Slipknot's all too and, hard for me. Yeah, but then I mean, they sort of, in that sweet space. Yeah, that's sort of what it's like, sort of like emo ish. I don't, I don't, I don't know what emo is. Really, yeah, but, well, they, they uh, are like a but, but like immediate precursor to emo. Like, 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 yeah. like more metal and music yes, kind of exactly. mixture. Yeah. And that's why they're in the sweet spot for me because it's a, a good vocalist that yeah. you can understand but yeah. has kind of a hard edge. Yeah. But, but for and me, that's why I like it. If better. your song doesn't have a hook or a catch, yeah, the beat. Uh, it's well, gonna have, yeah, well, there's, you know, beats a beat, but but just some yeah. sort of memorable. How right. does the tune go? Oh, okay, that yeah. that song. Give oh, it a character. That's what's right. weird. You what need, maybe you need to listen yeah. to the uh, new album of theirs, and it could have been a live versus recorded thing. Yeah. But I felt like I could sing along to all of the Crying Spell songs. Yeah. Halfway through oh, okay. the song, I was like, huh. "We are the ones who take you to space." Like I could, okay. like it was huh. so. <laughs> they had a song that was like. I don't remember the exact tune, but like, and uh, this is the 
dance move. It's the finger. Yeah. I wanted to join him. I wanted to be the other finger person going, yeah. so but I thought it would movement, take man. too much. I know. Monkey, you know, everybody's doing it. But, <laughs> but he was the only dance. one doing it, and I thought it would read like I was making fun of him, which was what I was doing. Kind of. Yeah. But I wanted to we jump We got to do it behind him. <laughs> then it's making fun of him. If you're like, you know, next to him going, yeah. you know, then, then yeah. it might be a little more supportive. Yeah. But, but they, their songs, I found them very sing-alongable. Oh, cool. Right. Yeah. So maybe they've learned that or something. Could be. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that was, that was all for a charity, yeah? That was for a No, that, well, I don't. Yeah, maybe. that's what my wife said. Yeah, it was oh, for, okay. it's for it's some sort of charity. Oh, cool. We also got a free CD out of the deal. Oh, yeah. you did? So, cool. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. At the album they played, it was the release, and I have the CD now. Oh, okay, so it was a CD <laughs> release party. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It was really like, fun. That, that was really fun. Yeah, and I, like, I'm not that into music where, like, if I'm thinking, oh, I want to do something, I should call a friend and do something. Go to a concert is like the 40th thing on my yeah. list of like number one is There's, there a movie playing I want to see no yeah. number two is there a play playing I want to see no number three is there a karaoke bar within walking distance yeah. of my house no what about then, live comedy live comedy is about fifth or sixth oh really okay. because comedy clubs around here are a pain in the ass to go to yeah. so yeah. in Chicago it was number one it was like well yeah. what's what's playing at I.O. tonight let's road, go down the road it seems yeah, like what, what, all the good shows are like all the it's happening in Tacoma that's where people yeah. go for comedy Tacoma yeah. or Bellevue oh, really? I'm like I'm yeah, not going to yeah. drive to Bellevue yeah. and pay $35 to stand yeah. in line at Parlor Live right well, and like well, a friend of mine gets and then, his for free all the time oh yeah my friend gets them for free too but then you have a two drink minimum and like yeah. so you end up paying 30 they, bucks what they do is they, well they, they sit you in a really ticket. bad seat yeah and it's a hope, terrible club and they then they, what they want you to do is upgrade so you buy the yeah. upgrade well and usually most of the really good comedy go go to like the paramount or the yeah. you know you're watching their but their then tour yeah. that scale i to me that's not really good comedy yeah. that's sitting in an auditorium watching something if you watched on tv yeah. like just for my audience right. pr- you taste, like the, the to me i would i don't even think of going to the Paramount shows just because I'm like like pay 70 bucks or whatever for a seat and yeah. then you're like we, we went so and saw far back by the concourse of the Paramount and yeah. uh, uh, he plays Dave what the heck's his name Mike? Armiston no no uh, Ar- 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 Armage Ar- uh, Armiston plays Dave oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. what is that guy's uh, name I don't know Twilight Concourse he's the Arge Barker Arch Barker. Arch Barker, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, weird. I he, didn't know his he name. He did then. his. Uh, he did like an hour before oh, they cool. came on, and it was pretty right funny. On. That's yeah. cool. Oh, so he did like an audience warm up. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I think it was more. He was still testing on his new album. Right on. Uh, at that time, so. Yeah, kind of an album. But yeah, it was that's good stuff. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and that's just to me. Like, if I'm gonna just go catch a comedy show, like. I'm a little snooty so about that. Is there anything that. like on Capitol Hill for comedy? Like, because is the improv still downtown? Yeah, but it's not good. You no. Know? And then there's like what giggles up at 45th and in, in, in yeah, the but U district. Yeah, nobody I want to see plays there. The people yeah. I want to see, have, like they do bumper shoots yeah. or they do right. Parlor Live. Yeah. And like I saw David Allen Greer at Par- Parlor Live, and he's yeah. fantastic. But the entire oh, yeah. experience sucked so bad yeah. because it was like you had to just get through so much garbage and nonsense and like like uncomfortable seats. Like you're sitting on stools crammed next to six other people, and it's like this sucks. Yeah. Like it was just so not worth it. And like the shows are so late, and then ugh. they are late. Like, they yeah. Right around like ten. Yeah. 10 night. But I'm snooty about that because in Chicago you could just like. Go to the thing and see someone right. awesome like Kristen Wiig and uh, John Lutz were doing improv at like I O and I just like oh, walked wow. in and sat down at the bar and they're yeah. just on stage and I was like this is so great like wow. it's just like and there's so much going on so many places that like yeah. everything's cheap everything's accessible there's never any lines for anything it's just all there yeah. so now it's like well if I want to see something funny I'll just watch a roll show or, yeah. like the live comedy here just isn't exciting to me because okay. even like the improv they're doing old sad improv they're not doing like cutting edge exciting things they're doing like right. zombie improv show and this kind of improv show it's like just have talent and do comedy but they're not 
they're trying to package it, and it's just it doesn't. Which kind of defeats the purpose of improv, doesn't it? When you start packaging it and labeling, it's like if you're me, it does. Yeah, it just is. But, it's kind of you know they believe in it, and it's like well they need to get audiences, whatever. But like to me, it's it's chasing something instead of creating something. It's yeah, like sure. this is what improv is, so let's try to do that. But it's like well people who are in like Chicago is kind of the the edge of improv where like everybody who loves improv and does well in all the cities around the country feed into Chicago because that's where you go and then in Chicago you have people who are like oh let's do this new thing and let's try this different thing that to me is a lot of what art is is exploring and finding out what's new and good rather than just replicating what's been working before exactly you know because you're not really all you're doing I mean you know, granted, I mean, if, if something's good, perpetuate it, sure, but is that art, or is it just mimicry, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and it's, like, there you just have so many, even people just like me, like, on my level, where it was, like, people I was taking classes with are just, like, trying new things and doing, like, weird things where, like, I would be sitting in an audience, like, loving the show, thinking, no one but me will ever love this show because it's so inaccessible and weird and confusing, and I'm just like, yes, like, that's awesome. But, you know, I don't know. And, like, if things are funny, they're funny. Right. It's like, I can go to stupid stuff and that's, like, Carrot Top, and I'd probably laugh my ass off at Carrot Top because it's, like... Like it jokes and you know, like he'll like something that's just funny. Like it, not everything doesn't have to be like right, Fred right, Armisen right, right. in a Cuban costume at a you know like right. everything doesn't have to be at that level. But to me, it's sad to go to the downtown improv thing, yeah. just because like the audience is sad. They're all super drunk, yeah. and the people on stage are all really uncomfortable, and it just feels like bad. Like, I, I, because I went a lot when I first moved here. Like, I would go to a lot of improv stuff. I just made the bar could probably be pretty high for you, too, given that you were yeah. in Chicago yeah. for a while. Like, you know, yeah. and, um, so. It's true. Because, like, I, well, yeah. when I went to a theater All the sports good ones are show taken here, when they went to Chicago. I know. It's true in some yeah. ways. Yeah. But, like, I went to a comedy sports show, and it was really funny, but it's short form, and I'm not that into short form. You like the long form. I like long form, but... Well, you like what you like. I like what I like, but I laughed. I so had a great what time. what don't you like about sketch? Kind of what do you mean? Like sketch comedy. In general? Yeah. Like, what is sketch yeah, that I don't I, like? Yeah. I mean, is it like or, people's... I, I don't know. I, I, it seems like you prefer... Are you, you asking me if the, I don't you know, like sketch? Or I guess, yeah. Me, do you oh, like sketch? I don't like doing sketch. Okay. But watching it, but watching it, I if it's good, I okay, like good well, sketch. All right, is that I've is that just to, if it's hard to get good sketch? Yes. Okay. Sketch yeah. is really hard because you have to first be able to act. I'm sure as well. Yes. Right? Here's why sketch is hard. I've thought long and hard about this. Number one, there is a so many people are doing sketch. Right. Like there are thousands of sketching or sketch comedy festivals all over the country every day and. Every improv team is working on a sketch show, and every person on earth has watched 25 seasons of SNL yeah. and Kids well, in the Hall sure. and all the British sketch shows, which right. is why Curl Show is so amazing because it's oh, yeah. it feels fresh to me, and that's and good. the Ben Stiller show and the Ben Stiller show and Mr. About show that. Yeah. and you know Monty <laughs> Python for 45 sure. freaking years, yeah. but like. So every joke that has been done is done. Yeah, it's like, like there's the South Park of. Exactly. <laughs> and then, like, you, if you do a sketch show, you don't rehearse it for six months and put it on like a play where you can really fine tune everything. Right. Usually it's done in a short period of time. Right. So if you're going to live sketch, where it's like not a, a TV show or something, if it's right. like people doing sketch in front of you, right. most of the time it's really under rehearsed oh. and it's really raw and it just feels like, like, if they're good at it, they are the funniest people. On Earth. Like my friend Mike, um, he, his name's Pat, but he uses the name Mike on SNL right now, Mike O'Brien. He used to do these sketch shows in um, Chicago with this his comedy partner that were like, it, I was there like the first day and then I'd usually come back two or three times during their, their run because he's like a genius at it. And and there were just a couple of people where, like my old improv coach, Jet, she does these um, sketch shows with her comedy partner that were so good. And so, like, the good ones just are good at it. And, like, 
they are beautiful and wonderful, but they most have, people they have a really suck good sense at of it. timing too. Oh, oh is yeah. it sort of like yeah. like, like the Carol Burnett show where they just have everybody like Tim Conway and Carol yeah. Burnett, and it's like so if, even when it's bad, it's still good because yeah. they just know how to roll with the punch. Yeah, and, totally. And um, their writing yeah. is fresh, and they do these interesting yeah. things, and so it's like good sketch is the greatest thing on earth to me, but ninety percent of sketch sucks. Okay. And that's how I feel All about right. it. All and right. like. When I did sketch shows, I would I would always like I, I do plays and I'm you know, and I do improv. But I think I think I'm best at improv. And improv is funnier than sketch because it's Im- improvised and the audience gets into the energy of the they know this isn't planned and so you can say things that are a tiny bit funny and it feels really funny because it's it's spontaneous yeah, and it has that energy. But in sketch, when you make a joke, it has to hit really hard because the audience audience knows that you wrote it and so they're not like if you say something that's just a little bit like oh that's kind of clever and funny people are just like oh man you thought about that for two weeks that's not that funny like it's a different expectation but I think that I was okay at sketch but that um, most like the the best thing I'm good at is improv and then the next best thing is like um, probably doing plays where you rehearse them longer and then the third best thing would be sketch even though in, I thought in the I'd, comedy realm? Yeah. Or, okay. Well, actually, the first best thing is improv. The second best thing is musical stuff, like musical theater. Okay. Um, the third best thing would be just regular comedic plays. Yeah. And then the I'm surprised best you don't get into a, a musical comedy group. That would I mean, be okay. You, you'd fit right in. Yeah. I mean, you've got a very I think musical comedy good music is, in many background. ways, overdone. Yeah. You know, like I think there's too much of it out there. People who are kind of like, oh, this is my joke about masturbation. It's so funny. I just I feel like I've heard it a thousand times and it's not that fresh to me. Yeah. But like, I like it's using music out. in other things. You know, like I think that if I thought of a clever way to do it that wasn't just me writing songs about poops and arts, yeah. I would do it. Yeah. Okay. I used to do yeah, musical to improv, me. which I think I'm awesome at. Oh, making yeah. up songs, oh. singing on the fly, right. that is the thing I'm probably the best at. Okay. Because well, I can make up a tune and I can sing harmonies and I can, you know, was a gal it combines on, my two best things. Whose line is it anyway that was uh, like the British version? That she was yeah. just always really right. good with it. She could just like do, I, I don't totally. even know her name. Which, she had like long, which black version of it oh. are you talking about? Are you talking about the one or uh, the British one before okay. the old uh, one. Dana? No, yeah. Carrie. Drew Carrey. Drew Carrey took it over. Took it over. Yeah. So it's Drew Carrey, Dane Cook, Dana, Dana Carvey. Carvey. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. it's a, a it's a yeah. DC day. DC day. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. I just I my my thing that I haven't found something to do comedically is uh lack of follow through and like meh. like the things I think are really awesome like I think that my best show ever is me dancing like I do a funny like um, Eastern European ballet dancer character <laughs> and do funny dances and that's fucking hilarious to me like I think it's the funniest the single funniest thing I do and like I thought your I've done idea it. for improv dance was pretty good that's that uh, it's kind of along those lines where yeah. like like we did a show where the audience brought their mp3 players and then there was a host who had plugged in one of them and hit shuffle and then we had a dance troupe a dance troupe in quotes we would improvise a dance based on that song and then we would use that to create scenes so like you know if you're doing a certain kind of movement maybe the next character does like kind of a similar body movement and use it to like do little comedic scenes then we do another dance that was the funnest show i've ever done and that's like purely really hilarious to watch people try to make up a dance, um, but you know it's one of those things where it's like, well, yeah, if I had six other people, and I mean we did it, budget. yeah, and we, I mean for that show we rehearsed more than for any other improv show I've ever rehearsed huh. for because you have to like, and all we do is just like put someone's iPod in, right. and shuffle and dance for an hour. This is practicing kind of. Getting in just tune with the music and getting in tune with being being funny. spontaneous. Yeah, with, with each other really, and, yeah. and paying attention to what other people are doing and like learning like how to lift people mm. and like doing things where it's like, oh, now we should do like a, 
a, where we lift this person and then we'd all run and do it and just like following each other and getting in like a right. really okay. tight gel thing huh. where right right so it's more like learning how to work as a team and yeah getting your body a little more conditioned to the yeah and how to and... look like you're you think you're a good dancer oh, okay because that's right, right. Uh, some oh, yeah. acting where it because if you look like you're like I'm just dancing yeah. no, no, it's not you funny you gotta take it all. serious and then it's more funny exactly yeah. if you were like I'm a dancer totally. then no, that's no, really no, funny yeah, yeah. so it's like like, yeah, because you have that look of intent. And, yeah, and, uh, yeah, exactly. But the one weird random thing, the, the hitch, once we put the show up, was that uh, people's MP3 players have shitty um, headphone connectors oh. because people wrap their cords around it and right. it bends it. And so we'd be like dancing and then it would be like, it's getting <laughs> like it would kind of cut in and out, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh! Like, how do we fix this?" So there were some logistics problems that were weird, but that's the kind of show where it's like really funny, but like I don't well, know if, if you people added, would come to added it for a, weeks a computer, on computer. Like, like sometimes when uh, DJs play or. Uh, there's performances. They have a videographer, yeah, kind of person that will throw up video stuff to you. Right. So if somehow he could randomize the music, yeah. oh well, we as thought well about as, like as put up some visual yeah. sort of enhancement too might like be a way to go. Like if we had continued to do it, the right. idea was that um, we would have a host at the beginning with a sign that was like, "Submit your song for the shuffle," yeah. and that you would. Pull well, off of just, people. Yeah, just go to Spotify and pretty much find whatever. Yeah, you or like do. type I mean, in it, the songs, and yeah. then it would have a randomized right. thing. Right, right, right. Which is fine, but it was just fun to have people like like oh, everyone yeah, would just yeah. like hold their iPhone or their yeah, whatever's you, up you really, and walk around with the cord, and then just hit uh, shuffle. It just felt like, oh, really, what are they gonna do? And sure, like people yeah, came. That. Who were friends that were like, like, oh, I brought, I cleared out, and there's a playlist for this show of oh, songs wow. that I want to watch you guys come up with a dance oh, for. Okay. But the weirder the music was, the, the easier it was to dance to. We found yeah. like, oh, yeah, like yeah. one of my friends brought like ambient trance that was yeah. like, <laughs> like sounds of trains and stuff, oh. and that was super easy to dance to because we would just like, like, do almost like like pantomime stuff to it, and it was yeah. like super easy. Yeah. It was like the so pop fun. songs that were like um, we got like a rap song that, and we're like alright I guess we're break dancing yeah, and it was like right like trying to do the you know <laughs> hip -hop and I did stuff. like I went up to the wall and just did like a sad headstand like I did yeah. like a you know like put your feet up on the wall and just did a headstand and then it was like ta da yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> yeah no that show was great I just like doing comedy is hard because you have to like find a place to do it and get people and you know since if, if you're not like like with dancing I think if, dancing can be very easy if you're not in your head with it you know but if you're yeah. wondering how you're looking or how this move's yeah. gonna go then it's totally evident but if you just it, I think it's yeah that turning is also off your inhibitions yeah, yeah, and just just running with it, not caring right, what the right, outcome is. Right, yeah. Totally. Then you know I can do that in my own house, but not in public. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. In it's, public, it's self consciousness. Like it. It's self consciousness. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly why you can do it in your house and not in public. <laughs> yeah. Or if I'm really well, drunk, I could do it if I'm drunk. That's it's one exactly of, yeah, definitely. Why, yeah. You know, yeah. But for me, that's one of my lessons in life is to how to get rid of that. Yeah, know? totally. Uh, but but that's dancing has been one of those things that's allowed me to. You dance, right? I dance. Yeah. Yeah. dance. Not to grow. Madonna though. Yeah. Not to Madonna. Nobody ever dances to Madonna. <laughs> oh, they do. You gotta just they do the, the yeah, fingers do. on the eyes. They the, vogue. The bee no, fingers. I'm I, like a yeah. You I made vogue. the connection in in high school that if you if you're into Madonna music, <laughs> you're same sex penis, oriented. Yeah, you're <laughs> totally. you're same sex oriented. So that, that's like that was like the litmus uh -huh. sort of test. It's like but, I wonder if that guy's gay. How you feel about the new Madonna yeah, album? Yeah. Oh, I love it. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it holds yeah. up. It totally oh, does. Yeah. Well, Works I mean, for some women too. Yeah. Not all. It's not the pure. Is that like, the same you know, litmus test you use for share too? I mean, does it share? Oh, well, share's share. a given. I mean, yeah. that's pretty obvious. Share. Yeah. Um, no, but I do want to. I mean, with comedy, well, just jumping back to myself, because you know, I love talking about myself. But I have found that, like, in the women's chorus, I've had lots of opportunities to do funny stuff because I did the concert. And now, like, when we did our retreat, I hosted um, the awards thing, and I've been able to do all this fun stuff. But what I really want to do is develop, and actually, like, I found um, 
a, I met a girl who I think is really funny, but I don't think she's ever done stage comedy, but huh. I'm going to try to make her. But I want to develop like a, a, like a funny <laughs> circus funny. act kind of thing and go to some of the variety shows and pitch it yeah. as like a, like a, I don't know what yet, but okay. something that's like kind of costumey with characters okay. that would be almost circus-like. You know, like Cirque the clowns so and circus. Yes, yeah, Cirque so gay. I actually have a friend who that was their Twitter yeah. handle. Oh Cirque yeah, so gay. Yeah, um, nice. He's a he's a clown with Cirque du Soleil. I think he's in Montreal now. Yeah. Anyway, nice. I met him in Las Vegas doing improv. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, but I'm that's what I'm I've been thinking I should do is something kind of like a character based thing that's transferable. Okay. Huh. So then we could do like maybe web web clips that were okay. something funny or do a stage thing but yeah. that had some you know maybe it's I think music with your maybe film it's... background getting into web clips would be pretty fun for you but... it would be fun i just haven't you know had an idea that's like oh that's the idea yeah. but, you know speaking of funny handles I, mm. I i'm sure i've said this before in a previous podcast but i have to revisit mm. um i play a lot of team fortress 2 yes okay. and one of the character names was LL Cool Beans. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, like, oh, uh, that's Doug Benson cool. always... Uh, there was, that one. He d- has like categories on Doug Loves Movies and they get submitted through Twitter and there's a person on Twitter who's submitted a ton of them yeah. and their name is Mean Laquifa. Mean Laquifa. <laughs> nice. It's, it's so funny to me. Queefa in there too. Mean oh, Laquifa. Nice. Oh my gosh. It totally that is good. Me I like that one. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a, a, a group out there that does uh, Green Day covers. Mm-hmm. They're called Dean Gray. Dean Gray. Dean Gray. <laughs> but That's pretty yeah, clever. Yeah. Switch name. Switch yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's true. So, how are yeah, we doing on time? We're about it right at an hour. Okay. Um, I well, I went. I want to just warn everybody: do not go see Cloudy with a chance of meatballs too. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we well, spent it's in my Netflix done queue. And oh my done. god! Yeah, it was the first one was okay because it's like it's. I don't think I've ever seen any of them. I like. The I saw end. the first one. It was all right. Yeah, it was all right. Remember, not memorable though. I don't remember no, a lot about it. The second one was horrible. Uh, I, was, I fell asleep. I never uh, fall asleep during movies. Movie theater, uh, I mean, you the fall movie asleep? theater. That's I was nodding out. I was like, "It's a sucker for the." 3D animated movies too. Mm-hmm. It's so. not good. It's well, not good at here's all. what I think about the 3D animated movies. It's worse. I'll just throw Pacific this out Rim. there. Oh, we are at okay. the point where it used to be 3D animation was this new, um, expensive thing that took you know a lot of time and money, and now it's becoming more accessible right. to more people, and so oh, yeah. the quality is in the toilet. Ooh, where a lot going of movies, up in a lot of because you look at like Rango. No, Rango was some... like six years ago, though. I'm just yeah. saying the, the like right. you're always gonna have the good ones, but they're not all good anymore. No, like it right. used to be that if you could get an animated movie in the theater, it was gonna be really good right. because you had to put so much into it. They, but now it's like everybody with yeah, you know, a lot of Jurassic put... Park ripoff stuff in this <laughs> movie. Oh, <laughs> That's was... a timely like. Oh, oh wow. remember that movie from 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah it was. Here's a spoof on yeah, it. Yeah, because what's that one that? With the there was a Rocky and Bullwinkle spinoff, the Sheldon or what? Oh, what's it's that? Mr. Sheldon and Mr. Peabody's yeah, coming Mr. out. Yeah, it's yeah, like, that's like all right. Uh, is that, okay, that, but the thing with animation though is animation shouldn't be its own genre. You could have a right. Western animation yeah. or a right. sci-fi animation. So yeah. it's just the medium. It's not the. I mean, TV. Right. Yeah. It's doing that because there's yeah. like cartoons for kids and cartoons for adults oh, and yeah. this kind of cartoons and that kind of cartoons. Right. Like but in cartoons movies, I think kids, it's though. just. Animation, which is why. Right. It's but like, another thing that I read about animation is is that you you want to use it effectively, like in surreal like things where it makes sense to do it right. as an animation rather than a, a, a live film thing or a yeah. cell drawn animated thing or totally. you know like when they make right. Garfield or like this new yeah. Sheldon and Peabody, it's like it was fine as two D or the Smurfs. Yeah. Yeah. Good gracious! You don't need well, to have they're the blending. Smurfs. They're blending animation with live action too, which was right, done which with is even worse. Yeah, yeah. Games. I don't think that. Uh, I, I can't do it all CG or all animated or all film. It just, I think it's yeah. if, if if it feels right, it's right. You know, like yeah. you were saying, if it's called for, then it it's cool and it looks yeah. good. And yeah. if it's not, then it's like, man, it is gimmicky. Or, well, anyway, because like. 
District 9 is a CG animation uh, mixture with oh. live action, and that's freaking awesome. So uh, it's like like what we consider animation and what we don't is changing yeah, because right. like a lot of movies are largely animated, but we think of it as just graphics. Right. But that's when they're done so seamlessly that it's right. not stark, right. you know? Right. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, like District 9. Um, I saw an ad for a really neat... Uh, stop motion film coming out called Box Trolls. Mm. The art looks just incredible. Awesome. I don't know about the plot. Box I don't know about trolls. it's called. I think it's called Box Box Trolls or I something. I love stop motion. But it's it's like you know Coraline or yeah. Bride. Yeah, Bride. Yeah, I like Coraline. Bride. What's that Bride one? Um, right. Corpse Bride. Corpse, Corpse Bride. Bride. Yeah, 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 which was really neat. Like a Tim and yeah, yeah. yeah. But it looks really cool. Nightmare Before cool. Christmas. Yeah. Exactly. Right on. Exactly. Cool. That, Box you know. Trolls. Yeah, it looks it fun. Right on. All right. Well, we're out of time. We are. And this is episode thirty-seven. Wow, fast, yeah. fast approaching a year. Easy. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Cool. One, two, three, go. Yeah, I think I got in at what, like away. episode nineteen or something. It was in the teens. I yeah, thought, right? it was. But, it was it might have been twenty. I don't know. Around the yeah, I get really excited about milestones, but then they quickly peter yeah. out. Well, no, okay, so I can't. At around thirty, I think I had been in more than I wasn't in. Okay, that so, makes sense. So you were yeah. in there in the teens. Or you were still. Nice. It still was in its infancy when you joined us. Yeah, yeah. totally. Which has been a, I feel a really good addition. Oh well, thank you. I've, yeah. I've enjoyed it. Sometimes like, I just so, stop and I watch you guys talk and I forget that I need to talk. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, hey, it's no, plan, no, it's Scott. fine. I okay, just, yeah. I as long know. as we're not you I get, know, I get stepping all over you. Pulling all the weight around here, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> there, you, there, yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, you, okay, so here we go. Here, okay. Listeners, vote, vote if we need more Scott. Ooh, okay. In, yeah. in, in the equation. Scott, tell uh, us something you feel strongly about. Go. Strongly about um, peanut butter. Okay. In what way? I don't know. I just feel strongly about well, it. Well, you can't not know if you feel strongly. Well, no, he, that he, make okay. any sense. Uh, 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 Friday, or Friday you with a chance yeah. of meatballs, too. Okay. Yeah, he, it was he, it was he, he big felt, time. Yeah. It was a flaming turd. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, well, yeah, there, was no, there was no cleaning out one. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad uh, we all I'll, paid I'll eliminate it from my Netflix queue based on that recommendation. I almost wanted to go up there and say, I want my money back, but it was only two bucks. Huh. A waste of time. Yeah. Um, I've discovered the uh, beauty of the getting your money back from the movie theater. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I never did it until about three or four years ago, and then my friend Ryan and I would just go to the movies every week. And uh, at a certain point, we were like, at forty-five minutes into it, we looked at each other. Nope. Get up, walk out. Like that movie sucks, and they just give us. A free pass for the next Just movie. Give your oh. opinion of the movie. Yeah, we we're oh. like, we don't like it. We're not staying. Like, you can't stay for the whole movie and do it. Right. But if you leave in the middle, they will totally give you passes Some, for the oh. next movie. Okay. And so, like, there were a lot of movies that we would go to that were just terrible, and like, we'd get a pass for the next week, and then we'd go hit right. the bar across the street and well, kill the rest of the especially night. Especially when you pay pay full price. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. totally. But I think some theaters they have it implemented where you can't. There's like a there's it's even before 45 minutes. It's like with like. Like well, I think is that for a refund or for free passes to no, another one? I've never asked difference. for my money back and not yeah. gotten a free pass. Oh, I mean, really? they they might if you wanted your cash back. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is, like, it, is it a refund or is it an exchange? Yeah, this you know what I mean? sucks. Can we just get some free passes yeah. to go to a different movie? And they're yeah. like, yeah, cool, and they just tear yeah, you. I think like within ten months. minutes, if you're like, if there's you know, way too yeah, many people in the is, crowd or for whatever reason. Yeah, you didn't actually watch the movie. Then they might. I've even gotten money back for a movie I watched in its entirety, which was Rush Hour Two, because oh. it sucked balls. <laughs> and my it. friend and I were there, and we were like, "Well, let's at least stay for the bloopers oh, at the end, which is the best part of a Jackie Chan movie." And in the theater, they turned the sound off. They they flipped the lights oh. and turned the sound off for the credits, oh. and we were like. And we could see, and I was like, this is what we waited, oh my gosh. And I went out and complained. And the guy was like, you stayed for the whole movie. And so I just emailed Carmike Cinemas and was like, hey, this is bullshit. 
and then they sent me a bunch of free passes. Cool. Yeah. yeah. You can always complain. I think companies yeah. are, it's within their best interest oh, yeah. to make sure customers are okay. Yeah, totally. Because, yeah, negative publicity. Their, their word of mouth advertising yeah. weighs a lot sure. heavier than oh, their totally. actual advertising. And if it's a decent movie theater, I mean, I'm sure there are movie theaters that they don't care, but most movie theaters want to, like, they want people to, especially if you're a person they who count, goes to the movies, they count on your want to keep you. Yeah, yeah, so let, yeah. let me put out there to our listeners then, if you, if you guys ever want a refund, <laughs> we'll, we'll get your refund exactly. money yeah. back guarantee <laughs> when listening to 100% yeah. nice. satisfaction that, guarantee put that on our web, uh, website true. 100% guaranteed yeah. you get your money's worth so, alright well that's that's uh, the copy from the coffee shop cool. Yay. see you next time huzzah huzzah, huzzah.